Good evening. Welcome to our celebration of the fourth Sunday of Advent. We will open with the Advent Litany. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book, the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every day, every side, he said, Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, go tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pastor and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones on earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over the, my people Israel. I will give you the rest of your, all your enemies. The Lord also re reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you sprung from your loins and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be father to him and he shall be son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me and your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to whom who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, 
but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end." But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. One day, a monk, a holy monk, was praying in his cell to qualify what kind of monk he was. And he looked out of the window, and he saw a mother begging for food for her malnourished child. And it was clear that she was a victim of a severe beating. And seeing this situation, the monk turned to God, as a holy monk would do, and prayed and asked, Dear God, how is it that such a loving creator can see so much suffering and yet do nothing about it. Then deep within this holy monk's heart, he received God's reply. I did do something about it. I made you. I think about that story because I think it presents for us the challenge that we hear in today's readings on this fourth Sunday of Advent. This story presents this great challenge that brings to us the scriptures and opens up the scriptures for us, namely that we have been created by God individually and uniquely to do God's will. 
David was a great king, as we hear, and as he came to the end of his life, he wanted to do something more for God. He wanted to build God a beautiful house. God, however, had other plans for King David, so it was necessary for him in doing God's will to back off and, as we know from the scriptures, eventually to allow his son Solomon to build that temple that he wanted to build. Certainly one of the greatest examples that we have of following God's will is our Blessed Mother. And today's gospel story of the Annunciation is truly a story of obedience. Imagine, if you will, picture the situation. Most likely Mary was a teenager, as scriptures tell us. She was betrothed to Joseph. And she must have thought that she would simply marry Joseph, raise a family, and live an uneventful life in Nazareth. But then, all of a sudden, her world was turned upside down with the angel Gabriel's message. And somehow, she had the courage to respond without hesitation to that invitation to be the mother of God. Behold, I am the maidservant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Mary's fiat, her saying yes, challenges you and me to ask ourselves, how willing are we to obey and do God's will? Certainly accepting God's will in our life and carrying it out is usually routine. It's usually ordinary. But it certainly can be rather dramatic, as is the case for Mary. In our day-to-day -day lives, when we do the simple tasks and meet our responsibilities, then we are doing God's will. But there are certain times that we're asked to do something we never considered or believe that we were incapable of accomplishing or considered really to be a true burden. So life throws us some curveballs sometimes, and there's a tendency for us to step out of the way because we don't want to get hit by that pitch. But we have to persevere despite the pain, despite the extra work or the drudgery we find in completing that perhaps unwanted task. To do so is obedience to God's will. Christianity is a great privilege. But along with all the privileges in life, there are responsibilities. And too often we enjoy the privilege but fail to carry out the responsibility that comes with it. Someone once said that great power incurs great responsibility. We have been graced with significant power. The Christian faith that we all share is that great power. And so we are also challenged then to respond to this gift by doing God's will. As we enter these final days of preparation for our Savior's birth, we need to be more like Mary and carry out the will of God to the best of our ability. It will not always be easy, but the goal that we seek, union with Jesus Christ, is worth every ounce of our effort. God bless you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to our loving Father our prayers of petition. For all God's people that are longing for Christ be fulfilled this Christmas, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local and national civic leaders, that God bless and guide them in their service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those caught in the web of addiction, that they find true healing and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and the religious life here in the diocese and for our seminarians, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish, Francesco Priori and John and Sue Schlett, for whom this weekend's Masses are offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the quiet of our hearts and minds, and for those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we present you these petitions. We ask you now to hear them and to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. 
highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Geoffrey, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come to the table of the Lord, we will be singing, Come, Emmanuel.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, we, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements for you this afternoon. Just please notice in the bulletin the extra times for confessions this week, Monday and Tuesday beginning at 5 o'clock, at least until 6 o'clock in the evening, Wednesday at noon, and again at 4 o'clock on Wednesday. So plan to prepare yourselves spiritually to receive our Savior's birthday by receiving the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Masses for Christmas Eve are at 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 8 o'clock in the evening, and Christmas Day Masses are at 9 and at 11. We've added additional Masses this year so that we don't, we have an opportunity that people want to come to church that it won't be overcrowded, so please don't everybody show up for the 4 o'clock Mass, okay, that defeats the purpose. And I don't want anybody to be turned away, and so I'm not going to turn people away. So please wear a mask, a facial covering, something to make sure that we can do that appropriately during our Christmas celebrations. Please remember also that you are asked not to save any seats because especially this year, I don't want people waiting and looking for a seat and all of that that we have to deal with. So please do not do that. A reminder that our Mass on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock will be live streamed. And so we're able to get that going. And thanks be to God that it seems to be working. And Bill's back there shaking his head. Tonight's Mass was live streamed and also will be recorded. And tonight's Mass was sponsored by Don and Debbie Semancic in memory of George and Mary Semancic and Bill and Louise Buza, their parents. So thank you for sponsoring that for us. Ministers are still needed for our Christmas Masses. I need extraordinary ministers for the 6 o'clock and the 8 o'clock Masses, as well on Christmas Day for both Masses, and as well for New Year's Masses. Lectors, I need electors for the 11 o'clock Mass on Christmas Day. So if any of you ministers are here and haven't signed up and would like to assist, please sign up on the Sacristy Hallway Bulletin Board. A plot key, the last of it that we have for the season, are, they're available on the table in the narthex. You can leave your donation. And the bulletin this week is a two-week edition, so please take one with you. Don't be calling me asking what time Mass is. So they're in the, available there for you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your week.